So now we are drawing the diagram of brachial plexus on the board. You can see initially we have drawn the vertebral body of C5, C6, C7 and C8 and P1 vertebra. Further we have drawn the nerves, the ventral ramae of C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. Now the ventral ramae of C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 are called the roots of the brachial plexus. Now they give rise to the trunk. The C5 and C6 roots unite to form the upper trunk. C7 continue as the middle trunk. C8 and T1 unite to form the lower trunk. Now we have drawn further. Now each trunk is divided into anterior division and posterior division. We can see the anterior division of the upper trunk and the middle trunk unite to form a cord that is called the lateral cord. Then the anterior division of the lower trunk continue as the medial cord and posterior division of all three trunks continue and united together to continue as the posterior cord. Now we are going to the part of the brachial plexus below the clavicle. You can see a dashed line in the middle. To the left of that, these are the supraclavicular part, which we discussed earlier. That is the roots, trunks and divisions. Then they form the cords, as I said, the anterior division of the upper trunk and the middle trunk unite to form the lateral cord. Then the anterior division of the lower trunk continue as the medial trunk, medial cord and all three posterior division unite to form the posterior cord. Now the cords and branches are the infraclavicular part. Now the branches, there are 13 branches given by the cords. Three branches are from the lateral cords. They are the lateral pectoral nerve LPN, the musculocutaneous nerve MCN and the medial root of the median nerve which forms the median nerve. Then five branches are given by the medial cord. They are the medial pectoral nerve, that is the MPN. Then the medial root of the median nerve, which unite with the lateral root to form the median nerve. Then the ulnar nerve. Then the medial cutaneous nerve of arm, medial cutaneous nerve of forearm. And lastly, the posterior cord gives rise to five branches. The cord itself continues as the radial nerve and other branches are the upper subscapular nerve, lower subscapular nerve, thoracodorsal nerve and the axillary nerve. So now after the branches from the cords, that is 13 branches, there are four more branches are also there for brachial plexus. There are two from the roots and two from the upper trunk. The branches from the roots are the long thoracic nerve which is formed by the contribution from C5, C6 and C7 root and the dorsal scapular nerve which is formed by the contribution from C5 and sometimes C6 roots. The upper trunk gives rise to two branches that is the suprascapular nerve and the nerve to subclavius. The branches from the roots and trunks are shown in the boxes. So this is a dissection of the brachial plexus. In this, we are showing the different parts and branches of the brachial plexus. You can see different colored threads. We have used color codes. Like there are 17 branches out of which we are able to see 16 branches. These five colors are from the medial cord. These three are from the lateral cord. And these five are from the posterior cord. These two are from the roots. And one from the upper trunk we are able to locate. So first, we are seeing the roots of the brachial plexus. We know there are five roots. They are from the, the ventral ramae of the C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. Then they form the trunks. This is the upper trunk by C5 and C6 roots. Then the middle trunk by the 
C7 root and C8 and T1 are united to form the lower trunks. Now the branches from the upper uh, the roots are true. This one is the long thoracic nerve going down and another is the this one is the dorsal scapular nerve which will go behind to supply the rhomboids. And from the trunk we are giving one branch here that is suprascapular nerve. The nerve to subclavius is very tiny which is not present in this case. After the roots and trunks now they form the division. The anterior division of the upper and middle trunk unite to form the lateral cord. And the lateral cord gives three branches. We can see this one is the lateral pectoral nerve. I am using for lateral cord the pink colors. Then the lateral root of the median nerve. This one is the lateral root of the median nerve and the musculocutaneous nerve. So three branches are by the lateral cord. Now we will see the medial cord. So this is the axillary third part of the axillary Lateral cord is lateral to that. We have seen the branches. Now we are seeing the medial cord which is medial to the axillary So it gives five branches. So here we are seeing this nerve, tiny nerve here. This is the medial pectoral nerve. Then this nerve is the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm. Then this nerve is the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. Then here it gives the medial root of the median nerve. And finally this is the ulnar nerve given by the medial cord. For that we have used this green color tags. Finally we are seeing the branches of the posterior cord. This is the posterior cord which is posterior to the axillary artery. So it gives five branches. This one is the upper subscapular nerve. And this is the lower subscapular nerve. Then this one is the axillary nerve. This one is the thoracodorsal nerve and finally the cord itself continues as the radial nerve. For the branches of the posterior cord, we have used the blue color tags.